Hello. <laughs> Today we're joined by Mark Thompson. Yep. Actor. Hello, That's right. darling. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm very <laughs> well. Thank you so very much well, for being you. with us. Yeah. How are you doing? Great. Absolutely brilliant. Busy, busy, busy at the mm -hmm. moment, as always. So, but. That's the way that I like it, you know, it's sort of, um, this industry, it's very infectious as, as we all know, and it's and it's just, it, it's brilliant to be sort of stuck into different things, you know, oh, loads and loads of stuff happening, and it's really nice to be immersed in, in this great industry that we're all working in, you know, so. <laughs> it's madness at times though, isn't yeah. it? Oh gosh, yeah. Oh yeah. my days. Yeah. So let's, let's just start looking at, at who you are and what makes you tick. That's what we're here for. You know, a lot of viewers, stuff. you know, are going to start thinking, oh, who is this man? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll start at the uh, at the beginning. Mm. Let's do it. So obviously, you know me as Mark Thompson, uh, but I, I, along the way, I got the, the nickname Tomo, uh, which everybody calls me Tomo, you know, my friends, my family. Even. Really? Yeah. So I, um, so I got I got Chris and Tomo from a very, very, very young age, um, left school and 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 when I, when I left school, I always wanted to be creative in some way, shape, or form. So the first thing I did, um, I went to college and I became a chef. So that's that's what what my job is initially. So I became a chef, a chef de party. So I went through the ranks, went to college, um, did a couple of years in a hotel in Edinburgh, um, and then realised that yeah, it's it's a great job this, but there was just something missing, just something missing. So. I applied to join the fire service, Great Manchester Fire and Rescue Service, actually. Um, and that's where, where I ended up in 1986. So I went from the frying pan into the fire. I love so that. Say. Literally. So that'd be a great thing for your book. <laughs> yeah, yes. Fry, yeah. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, in, uh, so I, le I left the, the catering side of things and uh, joined Great Manchester Fire and Rescue Service in, in 1986. Wow. As, a, as a probationary firefighter. So I then moved on, um, went through the years, uh, sort of best job in the world, because it's, it's what I wanted to do from being a very, very young lad. I uh, used to go outside Oldham Fire Station with my dad. Yeah. And at, at five years old, I said to my dad, Dad, I'd, I'd love to be a firefighter, a, a fireman as it was then. Yes. And so I said, I'd love to be a fireman, Dad. What, what shall I do? What shall I do? And he, and, he, and he used to say to me, one day, lad, one day you'll be a fireman. And that dream came true for me. So it was absolutely brilliant that I got in the fire service in 1986. Best job I've ever had in, in the world. It was just like everything all rolled into one. You know, it was like a birthday, a Christmas, everything. It was Seriously. fantastic. Wow. Loved every single minute of it. But, um, but... Oh, like everything, all good things have, have got to come to an end. So I've done my full 30 years. So, all right, so you can't go over 30 years then, is that...? You, you can, but things start to, to depreciate, you know, bits start falling off you. And <laughs> I, 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 sagging. I, sagging, yeah. I'm, aching. <laughs> aching, Our yeah. director knows all about that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and subsequently, you know, you, you have to move on in your life, as, as, as we all know. Um, so that was the advent of, of you know, the, the, the acting side of things. So, so I left the fire brigade in, uh, in 19, sorry, in, in uh, when was it? 2016 I left, having done the, done the full 30 years. Now, during that, that time, I'd had quite a lot of experience doing, doing extra work on, on the telly and stuff. So I thought, you know, this, this is really good, this. So I, I left in 2016. But there was a, a, a massive void. There yeah. was this big. I couldn't. I couldn't adjust to civilian life. It was. It was awful. I hated it for twelve months because I could. I could grow my hair. I could have an earring in. I could grow a beard, and there was no one there to sort of tell me off or, or discipline me, if you like. So I, I had a massive void where, where I couldn't fill. Fill. So I, like I said, I'd, I'd done a little bit of extra work. And, and, and I thought, right, it's time to do something creative now. So I got, uh, I got a, a, a role in Coronation Street as, a, as an extra. And I was watching the principal actors and I thought to myself, do you know what? I'd absolutely love to do this. This is what I would really like to do. So that was the advent of, of the acting side of things. So that's what, that's what I did. I sort of um, got into acting, 
uh, I, I went to work with the um, university students at Salford University, did a little bit of stuff with them, you know, doing some films with, with those people. Again, loved it, absolutely loved it. Um, and that's basically where I'm at at the moment, but I'm trying every single avenue I can go down within this industry because it's it's amazing. Mm. It, as we know, it's amazing, you know. Yeah, so, I think it's a case yeah. of just trying to absorb it all, isn't it? I mean, and we've, we've not had, I mean, we've had a lot of guests on the show, but yeah. never anyone who has been classed, I suppose, as institutionalised yeah. within yeah. a brand and within a chosen craft such as the fire service. Yeah. So, in essence, that's what you would become, institutionalised yeah. to the regime, to the rules mm. of it all. Absolutely, yeah. And then to lose all that. Yeah. I mean, some people wouldn't cope, would they? No, not the, at all. The thing is, as well, it was like... Um, I, 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 I'd, I'd gone through the ranks and I got myself a rank to, to what they call a, a crew manager, which which manage firefighters. Okay. So on the st in and around the station and, and even outside the station when we was out on, on incidents, I, I was classed as somebody that the younger end looked up towards me as, as this god, if you like. And, and, and even to the, some of the older end used to look up to me. And I find that, I found that, brilliant yeah i loved every single minute of it and and when i left the fire service that gone mm -hmm. i was a nobody so i was right at the very bottom of the pile and and i had to start again to sort of build that reputation where where people were not looking up to me but but respected me i was just about to yeah, say it's all about respect. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. respecting me yeah and, and i'm starting to see that now you know, and it and it and, and it's it's a real nice thing to have that respect. It really is, you know. Uh, when you've got like young up and coming actors asking for your advice, and I and I'm, I'm like, what me, <laughs> Matt Thompson? You know, Tom O. Mm. They're asking me for advice, and it's like, wow, you know, it's like a, a, another dream starting to come. I think it's because you've, you've got such a a, a, a magnetic personality. I think people drawn to you you know the first day that we met yeah, you know yeah. and walking into our studio today yeah, yeah. you just exhume this aura of that you're a nice guy and you're oh, approachable you. yeah. do you I not, agree. Do you not 100%, get that yeah. you know you you put people at ease and that's a very rare quality you know mm. that really is you know that that everybody wants yeah. to be liked but uh, you know at the end of the day you know if you can look back and say do you know what I was a nice guy. The, the thing is, I mean, th there's a lot of nasty things going on in this world at the moment. A lot of nasty things, and I think if you can be, if you can be nice for one day to someone and make somebody somebody's day that just that little bit better, mm. then then that's great, that isn't it? You know, if if you're nasty towards something, you're going to be nasty for the rest of the day, rest of the week, rest of the year, whenever. Too if you can be toxic. nice and just change someone's life, someone's life just for that little bit, mm -hmm. then I think you've cracked it. Yeah. You know. So, so obviously being, you know, obviously still going on about the fire service because it was it was the biggest part of your life. What is the? Do you have one incident that really stands out? One incident that's like, whoa, you know, that was huge. You know. Yeah. It, it, I hope you don't mind me talking about the, the, the trauma side of things, but... Um, of course not. Yeah, there's there's one incident that really does stick out more than anything uh, in my 30 years as a firefighter. And uh, and we I was driving one of the appliances at the time. It was the first pump, which is the first pump, is the, the first fire engine that gets to scene the very first time. Yeah. So we'd got the incident as a, a road traffic collision or a road traffic accident, as it was then, and we got it as road traffic accident, person's trapped. So straight away, you're on your metal. You're, I mean, you're on your metal all the time. But when there are children involved, you know there's kids involved. Yeah. You, you really are switched onto the max. So I was driving, um, and it was just round the corner from the station. So we rolls up at the scene, and it, and it literally is carnage. There's, there's cars, bodies, everything all over the place. I was driving... So the, the boss who, who sits at the side of me said, right, position the appliance now so that we can all get all the stuff off, which is what I did. Mm. So we rolls up at the incident and, it, and it's, it's awful, for want of a better word. It's, it's horrible. So 
I walked past th this, there was an ambulance um, at, and, and I was walking along to sort of get some information off, off one of the other firefighters to relay the message back to our control. Because as a driver, you've yeah. got to relay, relay all the messages back to control so that they can get everything sorted, yeah, basically. So as I was walking along, there's an ambulance to my left with sort of people and and bodies, if you like, sort of scattered around all over the grass. And I just managed to glance inside this, this ambulance and there was this little pair of shoes that was, I bet there was no bigger than that, a little pair of shoes attached to a little toddler that must have been 18 months old. And they were moving up and down like this and the reason why is because the ambulance people were, were working on this little child and yeah. that, to me, will stick in my mind for the rest of my days because that child didn't survive right, you know, okay. as a result of this mm -hmm. road traffic collision, you know, so, yeah. um, and, and it wasn't nice, it wasn't nice at all, it, it affected everybody on the appliance, so we get back to the station, we all sort, sort of uh, resets, if you like, yeah. about 10 minutes later the bells dropped and we were out again for a load of chickens on the M62. So, and they, they, these chickens were just running around everywhere, and you've got like all these burly firefighters running around chasing chickens. Oh, night and, so night it's and like day, isn't it? one thing to another, and that's within the space of an hour. So, you know, it was really funny watching these yeah. grown up firefighters <laughs> running around chasing chickens on the M62. After what you've just been through. After yeah. what we've just wow. been through. So it's, it's like peaks and troughs, peaks and troughs. Very much like the, the, the acting mm -hmm. industry, peaks and troughs all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah that's so, so that, that, was, that was the job that I loved because, yeah, we do thrive on people's misfortunes, but it, that's, that's in a nice way because we want to help people. Yeah. And you can draw um, you know, on, on these emotions, that's, that's the mark of a, of a great actor yeah. that you can yeah, draw absolutely. on your emotions and you can go into the pit of your stomach and think right that's a trigger absolutely so obviously after you you retired and you needed something to to fulfill your life so the acting started and it all started with coronation street it did indeed yes um, wow. now a, a lot of you out there are going to be asking what's the significance of of that piece of equipment on on the table there well that goes back a long way, that that is 36 years old, if, if we're honest. Um, and it's like the connection between both jobs mm. that, that I've had. And I thought I'd bring it in today just, just to, you know, just as a bit of a, 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 you know, an explanation as to why I'm in the fire service and, you know, the transition, mm -hmm. if you like. So, so that, that was your real one? Yeah, so I got issued that in 1986. Wow. And that's been through the brigade jobs and everything that we've had and that's that's been through the journey with me. Yeah. Um so so yeah, so in, in nineteen eighty six and just before that, um it's been on the set of Coronation Street. Oh wow. So oh, right, okay. put, yeah, so it's it's put it's put a fire out behind Jack Duckworth's house. <laughs> believe it or not. So yeah, so that's 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 the significance of that. So that's followed me. Everywhere I've, it's like a bad smell. It's followed me everywhere. That hat. <laughs> oh, it's your best friend. So, yeah, it is my best friend. Yeah. So, so yeah, I've used it on uh, a number of occasions when I've I've been on set. I've I've played a firefighter a couple of times, uh, and funnily enough, it's actually been on Coronation Street as as an as an extra. So not an actor yet, yeah. but as an extra. So I've used that as an extra on Coronation Street <laughs> and I've used it on, on, a, on a, a real incident as well, obviously, as you can see. Yeah. So I mean, history. my wow. ultimate aim uh, in, in this industry is to, is to get a role on Coronation Street. Obviously, I've got a, a, a long way to go yet, but, but I, I will get there eventually. Yeah. It's just chipping away to, to get that... To get that break, and I, I, and hopefully I, I will do, you know. So of course you'll get it. Yeah, yeah. of course you'll get fingers it. Fingers crossed. Definitely you know. will. There's stages yeah. to it, isn't it? You know, and I think being a supporting artist is brilliant because you get so much yeah. on-set experience. Oh, absolutely. Because I've done yeah. it myself. You know, I did wow. Mission Impossible Seven with Tom Cruise and a few other. Wow. And you know, as much as I was just an you know supporting actor, I think 
it's the easiest and best way to learn because you're actually getting paid yeah, to yeah. learn. Oh, that's, abso that's absolutely, how I look at yeah. it. Yeah, and you get to network with people. I, I, that, and, other and that's what it's all yeah. about, isn't it? You know, yeah. the, I suppose uh, as as well being it being an, an extra, you're learning all about what goes on behind exactly. the camera as well. Yeah. So you you know when to to reset. You know when yeah. to what, what the director's looking for and, and stuff like that. Mm. So as an extra, you get you get chance to look at that. You know, you've got time to, to look yeah. at what's going on behind Absolutely. the camera. But but as an actor, it's it's a little bit different as as you know. Mm. It's it's um you know you've got to be absolutely switched on to the max yeah. so so you you don't get to see what goes on behind the camera but as an extra yeah you do learn that craft don't you, you do. I totally agree yeah. with that yeah but then obviously you so, you stepped into the world of film playing opposite me <laughs> ah, didn't you i certainly wow. did so i mean yeah. that yeah. was i think the journey that we've been on yeah you know, has been remarkable, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. you know, you stepped into my world as a leading man yeah. and yeah. literally took it with both hands and ran with it. You know, yeah. the first day that, that we started on Bullhog, I just, again, you know when you meet people, like when, when me and you first met and started this, there was that connection there, Straight wasn't away. there? Yeah. It's all in the eyes. And I think we were the same. You came over to me and you put your arms around me and you said, yeah, yeah. my name's Mark. And I was like, what a genuinely nice mm. guy. Did you enjoy being in Borg? Oh, I absolutely loved it. Did, we can't give too many I, spoilers no, no, away. I was going to say, yeah, there's the certain parts that I, I, hopefully people will see what goes on, but, um, but yes, I absolutely loved it. Loved every part of it, you know. Um, yeah. I'm dying <laughs> so, to tell you what's going on, what I'm not going to <laughs> no, do. No, you can't, but was that your first like, proper acting role uh, then in Borg? No, not really. No, I've done a few other indie films, but but this this was the the, the one that's that that yeah. It, I'd say it was the, the the biggest sort of part yeah. I've had. Yeah, but but I've done other little bits and pieces, you know. But Borhog was the main one. Main one. And talking of of, of main ones, obviously, you were on board as you know as as a as a mainstream character throughout yeah. a yeah. lot of the movie, and. Um, yeah, well, I don't even know what we can say about my film, but um, yeah, it's, it's you, 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 yeah, you put me through the ringer a little <laughs> bit, didn't you? Let's let's just say that you know, yeah, um, yeah. but you, you will see that when Borja comes out, you are all going to absolutely love it, and I think you're going to love what we created if you like really gory slasher, yeah, 80s retro horror films because that is what we have created, isn't it? It is yeah. off the scale terrifying yeah. but um you really did run with that character yeah, i loved it i, I was very loved, proud of you i for... really really loved it i mean so much so that i'd go home at the end of the day and and I, I, rather than have a shower i had to have a bath because it was full of bruises and all sorts of things you know, <laughs> yeah and, i did put you through a little bit as well yeah yeah. yeah yeah it was but it, but it was it was Brilliant. absolutely loved every single minute of it you know everything from start to finish from when we did the, the, the rehearsals when yep. we did, you know, the read throughs, right through till the finished product and, and the rap party, you know, it was mm -hmm. it was it was great to do. And the, but what the, a way to cut your teeth into movies. Absolutely. You know, yeah. And um and like I said for to, to see how you you ran with this character and um you know and what, what you what you created off your own back, aside from what directors were telling you to do, mm. you had your own idea of what you yeah, wanted. I did indeed, yeah. And to play opposite you, you know, the, the eye contact that yeah. me and you had again yeah. on the on the scene. You know, I, obviously I'm I'm not I'm a little bit smarter now, aren't <laughs> I? I just, I still <laughs> love it, yeah. Yeah. And the, the the thing is one of the nice things about Borhog was I was given a bit of a free reign, you know. Oh that's good. So so I, I was allowed to develop that character, mm. you know. Um I mean some some productions you it's sort of made for you, you know, and you've sure. got to, to mould yourself around what the director's telling you, but but with, with this one I was allowed to, to have a bit of a free reign and, and run with that, you know. Oh and you ran with it all right. Loved sir. It, yeah. Oh my <laughs> days. Yeah, I loved it. So what else? What else is happening at the moment? You've got a new agent. I have indeed. Oh, yes. Oh, brilliant! Good. Yeah. So you're and doing well then, because it's not that easy to get an agent. And she's lovely, isn't she? She oh, really amazing. is. Well, there is a story behind that okay. actually, um, and a, quite a good story actually. 
Um, my agent, I, I can't obviously name mm. names, but... Um, if you but, want to name your agent, you name uh, your agent. Well, it's Sophia Management, and she is really, really good. Sophia so, is incredible. She's yes, lovely. She, she really is. And how it came about was, um, I, I used to work with this man called Alan Spencer, who was... Who was um, we used to work in partnership in the fire service together. And we used to work with um, young kids that were very, very challenging. Mm. And he and, and I both worked together. And what we did, we tried to put these kids on, on the straight and narrow and get them back into mainstream school. And the job, job was a good one, you know. So we worked together for, a, I'd say, five or six years, Alan and I. And then um, about... About a couple of weeks later, we'd, we'd wrapped on this, you know, this, this thing that we were doing, this project within mm. within the fire service and in partnership with Connections Oldham. Um, we'd wrapped on that and we'd said us goodbyes. And I didn't see Alan for about 10, 12 years after, you know, after I'd retired and stuff. And all of a sudden I get this tap on my shoulder. I was doing an extra job somewhere. And there's a tap on my shoulder, and it's and it's Alan. Wow. And he and he's he's an extra. I'm an extra <laughs> on the same production. We hadn't met. We hadn't sort of um, you know we hadn't uh, said we was gonna do what we was doing. So we was chatting away like, and I told him that I I I just started acting, um, and I hadn't got on spotlight then, but um, but I was looking for an agent, mm. and he says, "You're looking for an agent, are you?" I said, "Yeah, definitely, hundred percent." So it just so happens that my daughter is, uh, um, you know, she takes on new talent and she takes on spotlight actors. Mm -hmm. So that was it. I was, yeah. I was like, I, I like blue touch paper and I'd gone. <laughs> you know? So, so with myself, Alan and Sophia yep. got together and Sophia took me on oh, as, nice. as, as, a, as an actor. I then got on Spotlight, mm. and, and, and now I'm sort of like, you know, I'm, I'm sort of... Uh, You're doing stuff all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Moment, yeah I'm doing Amazing. quite a bit of stuff here, here there and everywhere. Um, I've just done one recently, which was very exciting. Um, it was called 48 Hours. Uh, and what we had to do as, as, as a group of people, as a, you know, like a collaboration of people, actors, directors, script writers, etc., etc. What we had to do was get a team together and put a film, a short film together in 48 hours. So the talent had to be sourced, the script had to be written, it had to be edited, filmed, all within 48 hours. Wow. Now, it, and it, we, we actually did it, there was 25 teams within the UK yeah. and we actually, we, we, we nailed it, we got it, we got it sorted as, as, a, as a team, you know, so um, it's gone to the Cannes, Cannes Film Festival and hopefully we can get wow. somewhere with that. Oh my Amazing. God. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one thing I've been involved in and a few other bits and pieces, you know, and a, and a couple of indie films and stuff it's like that. It's what you have to so. do, don't you? I mean, you, you know, yes, we say this all the time, we've just got to keep swimming. You do. You, yeah, you've got to and, keep and going. And the thing with this industry is, like, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. So if you're an actor, Absolutely, probably look yeah, at yeah. doing a bit of directing, a bit of yeah, writing, yes. you know. Funnily enough, yeah. that's another thing. <laughs> so, I'd, I'd always, uh, I'd, I'd loved what was going on behind the camera as well as in front of the camera, okay. but I just felt as though there was just that little bit more what I, what I could pick up on, you know, what I could learn. Yeah. Um, and then I just so happened to be um, trolling through social media for, for things related to the acting industry. And I came across this course that was, um, it was a, a, a course on filmmaking. Mm. So I've, I've, I've literally just enrolled on this filmmaking course, which is two days long. I know it's not, you know, it's not a university thing, but, but it's two days long. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it gives you an insight into what goes on behind the camera. So I've enrolled on that and, and I'm really looking forward to that. Yes. That's in, in November, that. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, hopefully get that under my belt. And um, it's the world's our eyes. Keep absorbing, keep absorbing. absorbing, yeah. absorbing. Yeah. absorbing. Yeah. That is all you can do, yeah. mate. And I think with the industry, it's a business. So you need to know it all anyway. You can't uh, just say, I'm going to be an actor. You need to understand how yeah. it all works absolutely, from A yeah. to Z. So, no, brilliant and for you. It's a great journey. I'm mm. loving every single minute of it. That, and that void now has been filled. The, oh, you know, when, I, when I actually yeah. left the fire service, that, that void has now been filled and I'm, I'm sort of really, really chuffed with everything. That's, and it keeps you from under the wife's feet, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. You are, it, it does, yeah, it does. It's so. an, honour to call you one of my friends. Oh, you know I adore you Lovely. and um, 
I'm you are, way you are the nicest with. guys that I have ever had the pleasure of working with. And thank you. Just thank you for being on our show. Yeah. Thank you for it's coming been, in. It's been absolutely fantastic. I loved every single minute of it. Thank well, you. that was Mark Thompson. And if you want any more info of what he's doing, all of his credentials are going to be on the screen. And um, you might be getting some more offers uh, from me, my gorgeous girl here at the side of us. See you next time for more creatives on the couch. Take care of yourselves.